Gloomhaven, I want to follow up on some questions, some feedback, offer an additional supplemental perspective here as I continue to make my way through this awesome game. And uh, as always, so much of Gloomhaven is to discover, to unlock. There will be no spoilers here. We're going to navigate it. We're going to approach it. So the first question was... Uh, the monsters, the variety of it. And we were exploring this idea, Descent 2nd Edition versus Gloomhaven. If you were going to go in one direction, focusing on replayability, focus on diversity of monsters, which one kind of pushes its way out? Now, I'm a, I am a big fan of Descent 2nd Edition. It works. It does things very, very well on there. As a completionist, I have all of the expansions, the big box expansions, the small box expansions. I do not have all of the lieutenant packs. I just got into Descent 2nd Edition a little bit later. A lot of things were out of print, and it is on my list to track down one day from that perspective. So absolutely, Descent 2nd Edition is awesome. On a side note, I've reviewed it pushed up my thoughts that really go into and and focus on that in the board games playlist here on my channel and of course over on my blog if we're looking just at the monsters descent second edition has a wide variety we've got dragons we've got goblins we've got elementals we've got lots of different undead figures on there they come in kind of the regular variety they come in the Lieutenant variety, a, a little bit more powerful, and a couple of more activations, surges, special abilities on the dice. And then, of course, you have the lieutenants, which are either miniatures or kind of the cardboard tokens, depending on what direction you're going to go in. So certainly uh, a lot of diversity, certainly a lot of different ways to play it, whether you're playing the actual scenario, the actual expansion, or you're just doing an entire free-for-all as the overlord and kind of picking out what you want to do. On the opposite side, Gloomhaven, there are a lot of monsters in there. If we're looking at Gloomhaven as it exists right now versus all of the expansions for Descent, um, Descent has a little bit more in terms of diversity and availability. But the challenge here, of course, is Gloomhaven is literally a single buy-in for the core. Descent, you've got to do core. You've got to push your ways out. Um, at this moment, I don't know what's in print or out of print on there if you're going to go to the secondary markets. Gloomhaven has more out of the box. But what's interesting about Gloomhaven is uh, the diversity subtypes of those monsters. And what I mean by that is... You have the, the core monster, you've got bandits. But depending on the challenge, depending on the scenario, and depending on some other factors, not only do you have the core bandits, but they increase in ability, they increase in difficulty. And then layered over that, you have the activation cards. When it comes time to activate the actual monsters that you're facing, um, the cards offer a new layer of diversity. So it's kind of like... Layers within layers within layers. The monsters in Descent, there is a wide variety with how they act, what they do, and the challenge rating on there. And that's really refreshing because in the beginning you fight some bandits. Later on you're going to fight more bandits. After that, following up on some side quests, you're going to face even more bandits. And there's going to be a sliding scale and a lot of different challenges within there immediately right in the pack in where descent it's essentially you know generic lieutenant or the boss on there this is not really a fair comparison on it and, and part of this is my wargaming perspective but I, I understand where gloomhaven was going um descent does have miniatures where gloomhaven has the cardboard stand-ins for the monsters on there I won't say it takes anything away because they're printed really, really well and the art is really nice looking on there. And certainly you have that 3D visualization. But pure miniatures, it it does win out, um, especially if you're going to paint that up. But to replicate all of the monsters in Descent, in addition to the miniatures, in addition to everything else, I, I think it would have pushed the price uh, way, did I say Descent? Gloomhaven. It would push the price way over 
anything than that about 90, 100, 110 retail on Gloomhaven. This now pushes us into the characters for Gloomhaven. And this now pushes us into the, the second question of replayability and, and how that works out. So certainly in Descent, everything is known. You have the core characters in the box. You buy some of the expansions. You buy some of the packs. You get more characters. They have different classes. They have kind of favored classes. But you can even take those class decks and uh, cross-populate other characters. There is a diversity of equipment. There's different powers that you can utilize. And uh, while the characters are combat-focused on there... And they don't quite level up like you're expecting. They don't have the same um, level up abilities as, say, Gloomhaven. There is a lot that you can play with. There is a lot you can do in there. But, but everything is absolutely known. So this is really now a perspective of the game and where you want to go. Gloomhaven, you have the starting characters on there. And then you have these neat, no spoilers, uh, these really awesome little boxes. And you shake them around and there's a miniature in there. And... Based on the campaign and based how you play as your characters gain experience and level up and complete side quests, they're they're kind of personal quests, you now unlock new characters to play. Characters unlock characters. And cards change cards. There's this kind of um, like achievement, achievement unlocked with Gloomhaven, which is really a lot of fun. But it's not balanced like you think or, or perceived. It's, there is, and, and Gloomhaven, of course, not being dice-driven, being card mechanics. You have your hand of cards to play for character abilities. Um, you can plan or micromanage your turn down to exactly what you want to do. Descent 2nd Edition, of course, you've got the Fantasy Flight action dice with symbols and pluses and minuses and three hearts and two hearts and a lightning bolt. And you roll them and you figure out what surges you're going to activate. Um, two very far extremes. But with unlocking the characters, it depends on the personal quests. It depends on what you're able to achieve. You can be playing for quite some time and be working on a single character based on what you Drew, for the quests, your um, friend playing with you, they might progress very fast and now get an unlock. Once a character is unlocked, the entire party is available to unlock it and play it. So what I would recommend for playing solo, and this is kind of where I've, I've gravitated to, uh, Descent 2nd Edition, I can play four. I can play two heroes. I can play one hero. I enjoy kind of that that lone solo hero. I enjoy playing kind of two heroes on there, kind of going back and forth, just in my mind, the visuals. Descent, I've experimented and played it with one. You really want four in your party. You want four. That's going to give you good diversity. That's going to give you good unlocks. That's going to give you good synergy. It's going to be pushing things forward. There is a lot more to manage in Gloomhaven. And, and that's not a criticism. That's not a bad thing. It shouldn't put you off. Um, you need to be able to go a little bit slower. It's a great solo game in that regard because you can lay everything out and kind of make those decisions and see where you're going to go, what you're going to do on there. It's, it's a different approach. Now let's push into um, replayability and kind of catch up on that third point. So naturally, uh, Descent is a very excuse me, Gloomhaven. It's a very, very, very dense game. There's a lot of material. There's a lot of places to explore. There is a world map that unlocks uh, various points to explore and story and narrate. And uh, even after when you've run through the entire campaign, which is going to take you a long, long, long time, There's side quests, there's side campaigns before we even get into fan content and some of the Kickstarter content that's now been pushed out there that you can find and download. There's also going through the world, and I won't say playing the quest again because you're the campaign again because your unlocks carry over. You get to hit up all the dungeons that you've missed. And I've played it solo and with two different groups on there. And uh, what was interesting with the two groups when we played it both had a vastly different experience, vastly different 
career paths, vastly different uh, encounters and scenarios, a decision tree of what we encountered, different sides of the story, of the perspective. There is a lot in there. You will be playing this game solo or with a group easily a year plus. Easily. And that's not an exaggeration. If you were playing, say, one gaming session, one gaming session uh, a week, you know, maybe you leave it set up in, in your, your gaming cave, you're ready to go, easily a year. Out of all the games that I own, um, the only game that has more content and, and a longer campaign to play and explore uh, with some of the expansions included would be Kingdom Death Monster. I mean, there you drop Gloomhaven on the table, it's got bite, it's got meat on there. When you move into Descent 2nd Edition, um, the core has a lot of replayability because you're going to explore different tactics and see how things are going to work, but it, it is limited. It's Fantasy Flight. You know, they, they give you a little taste, they kind of get you interested, and from there, next thing you know, you're going crazy in the expansions. If I were to include the big box and the small box expansions versus Descent, the core box on there, um, I would say Gloomhaven has more, but Descent 2nd Edition has an awful lot in there too. You're going to be playing that for a long, long time. But again, this goes back to acquisition. Do you want to be in the game with one purchase, or do you want to be collecting over time? And, and you could be collecting over time. You could be playing your way through literally chapter after chapter after chapter with Descent 2nd Edition. The breakout piece, what's nice about Gloomhaven is that the AI and the game does the work for you. You play as a party, the monster AI controlled by the cards and how they activate and what powers activate. Um, everyone gets to sit down and play the game. That's how it's designed. And that works whether it's a solo experience. There's no house rules. There's no kind of uh, play the overlord. I'll figure it out. I'm really playing myself. I wish I was playing against the game. Uh, Gloomhaven does it all. Descent 2nd Edition, its design is overlord meaning it's it's one player playing the mission playing the monsters playing the game versus the party and and it works and it does really it does it really well and you have the overlord cards which invoke powers and you're trying to go as hard as you can against the party but it's not a co-op game fantasy flight has added on uh the app which allows you to play in a campaign and the app controls the monsters and controls the campaign. Um, I guess we see an update of this in, in Lord of the Rings. Uh, the app works really well. You plug in the expansions and the monsters that you have, and it generates stuff. What I enjoy playing through that is it allows you to not know what's coming next. You're not flipping through a book. You have no idea what it's generating. It's, it's a lot of fun on there. It is. It's very slick. It works. But um, personally, now you're tethered to an app right now you've got another piece you've got digital and and for me board gaming at least is look i want to go analog i want to sit down i want to play i want to see what's going on i don't want to i'm enough you know during the day going total digital i want to go analog there are um the print on demand expansions that generate random dungeons and that automate the overlord it works it's well done but it's not the core engine of the game. So just from that perspective, while you can solo group or non-Overlord Descent 2nd Edition, at its core, it's not designed for that. Where Gloomhaven from the ground up was designed for that. Okay, I probably should have let in with this question. If I had to make a decision, enjoying both games... Playing both games, um, collecting both games, playing them as solo, playing them with a group, and, and really exploring them out without giving away any spoilers. But I wanted to share my experiences first, so if my words have any weight, they can kind of be tempered by your own player personality and your gaming personality. If I had to select one to play, if I had to take one game along with me to just basically for the next year, year and a half, play solo with a group dig into it you know that that kind of one life game we always wanted we always wanted to play and like i'm just going to play forever and ever and ever it would be gloomhaven 
it would be Gloomhaven, and that's how highly I think of it, considering I love Descent 2nd Edition. I, I, I do. I love Descent 1st Edition on there. Um, but Gloomhaven, it's not necessarily better. It's different, and that different comes together in a much, much better single, satisfying package. Now I'm going to turn it over to you guys who have Gloomhaven and have worked your way through Gloomy on there. Your thoughts and experiences on it, um, especially if you have also played Descent. If you had to go all in on one, what would it be? 